In this video we're going to have a discussion about temporal arteritis. Uh, it's also known as uh, giant cell arteritis. Let's get started with a uh, picture. So here's a picture and um, right here they're pointing to uh, the temporal artery and uh, the, in this particular uh, patient it's inflamed and that's um, basically one of the arteries that can be inflamed in this condition. Uh, other parts of the body that contain arteries that can be inflamed um, in this uh, type of uh, disorder are not just in the temporal area but also in the carotid system as well. So eventually what happens is this um, inflammation can lead to thickening and narrowing and eventually occlusion of the lumen and uh, that can lead to ischemia and we'll talk about a, that a little bit later. So I just wanted to show you that picture to kind of uh, illustrate what exactly is going on. So now um, let's talk about symptoms. So what are the symptoms of temporal arteritis? Well there's some really non-specific ones but then there's some very specific ones so let's have non-specific and specific. Uh, Non-specific uh, is something that can happen in many many uh, disorders but specific uh, you kind of pay attention to because that's what usually shows up on licensing exams a kind of uh, in, uh, like key points or uh, buzzwords type of um, uh, things to look for. So fever, uh, fatigue, um, headache. Now here's a, here's a specific one, scalp pain. Scalp pain isn't really something you hear a lot, uh, and especially when the person is combing their hair or um, touching their scalp. So that's something that can happen in temporal arteritis. And then we have a lot of the the vision-related symptoms uh, that occur: diplopia, uh, drooping of the eyelid, also known as ptosis, blurriness, blurred vision. Now. Instead of just memorizing this, uh, why does this happen? Why, why do the eye symptoms happen? Well, the vision symptoms happen because the arteritis eventually um, causes um, ischemia of the optic nerve. So this is happening due to ischemia of the optic nerve the blood supply to the optic nerve is being compromised because of the inflammation in the uh, um, branch of the ophthalmic artery. So the ophthalmic artery is being affected and that eventually leads uh, to the ischemia of the optic nerve which eventually leads to these eye symptoms. So vision loss is caused by arteritis of branches of the ophthalmic artery. So remember that. Now let's go and list one more specific uh, symptom, jaw claudication. So pain, claudication. That's something also you don't hear that much about in clinical vignettes. So if you see scalp pain, jaw claudication, that's really uh, pretty, pretty uh, specific for temporal arteritis. And then, of course, uh, something that's very obvious is just the tenderness uh, uh, of the temporal artery, which uh, you know, which should be pretty obvious. I just wanted to put that in there. Okay, so this is sort of a a, a nice list of uh, symptoms. But how do you diagnose it? How do you how do you know that this is the case? Well, here's some clues. If somebody presents with this they're most likely going to be above the age of 55 and then headache is usually part of the of the symptomatology we talked about the jaw pain the jaw claudication uh, we talked about the scalp tenderness temporal artery tenderness um, so th those are some of the things you look for but then what are the uh, diagnostic tests well Temporal arteritis being an inflammation of an artery, you need to do some uh, tests that show uh, that there's some inflammatory process and that is ESR and C-reactive protein. These tests are nonspecific indicators of inflammation in the body, uh, so they would be elevated 
and temporal arteritis. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate, just in case you're wondering what is ESR. Um, another thing that you can do is a CBC, complete blood count, and that can show anemia, anemia of chronic disease. But the, the, the mainstay uh, or the uh, absolute way to diagnose it is by doing a biopsy, biopsy of temporal art, artery. And I have seen this ordered. This isn't just on the board exams. I have seen a patient who came in and this was actually ordered. The only problem with this test is that it takes sometimes several days for it to be done. And because it takes a while, it's not just something simple like a CBC. This might take a day or two or who knows. Because it takes so long, you have to initiate the treatment before. So you, have to tr you can't delay treatment. You have to give the treatment immediately. Uh, otherwise, the patient can develop vision loss. This is the way to diagnose it. But remember that the treatment shouldn't be delayed until you get this done because this may not happen for days. So what is the treatment? The cornerstone of treatment in the in temporal arteritis is steroids, and uh, of course the most popular being prednisone. And usually you give this as a taper. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a taper is, it's like 40 milligrams uh, for like a few days, and then 30 milligrams for a few days, and then 20, and then 10, you know, like that. Uh, treatment uh, can be weeks. Sometimes it can be months, uh, depending on the severity. Uh, I think some, where I even read that it can go on for two years, which seems very excessive, but that's what I read. Another thing you give is aspirin, because aspirin can uh, prevent uh, ischemia, to prevent ischemia. So this is really to, to, to help with the inflammation, and this is to prevent ischemia. So, um, really key points. Uh, you've got somebody that's greater than 55. They've got jaw pain. They've got this temporal pain. Uh, they've got uh, maybe scalp tenderness. And then you, uh, you do some tests. You're not really sure what it is. So you order a bunch of tests, ESR, C-reactive C protein, CBC. And it all points to temporal arteritis. So you order a biopsy brave enough to order a biopsy of the temporal artery but this biopsy is not going to be done for two days so you initiate treatment with steroids immediately prednisone and uh, you also give the, the the patient aspirin not the easiest diagnosis in the world but uh, a rather interesting one and let's uh, take a look at a couple of cl clinical vignettes to see how this appears on licensing exams an 81 year old woman 81 with a history of polymyalgia rheumatica. That's important because uh, this uh, can sometimes coexist with uh, temporal arthritis. And osteoarthritis comes to the office complaining of periodic severe left-sided jaw pain, headaches, and blurry vision. Temperature is a bit elevated. Blood pressure is 150 over 70. Pulse is 73. Respirations are 13. Physical exam, exam is significant for left-sided scalp tenderness, all the classic clues. The most appropriate next step in the management of this patient is to begin therapy with prednisone. The next one, a 74-year-old man comes to the clinic because of four-month history of intermittent headaches. He has no prior history of significant headaches. He describes the pain as unilateral, always on the right, generally located in the temporal region. On his review of symptoms, systems. He complains of some pain and stiffness in his neck, shoulders, and hips, which has also come on in the past few months. Furthermore, he has noticed an unusual pain and tiredness in his jaw uh, near the end of meals. Temperature is 99, blood pressure is 122 over 72, pulse is 62, respira respirations are 16. Pupils are equally round and reactive to light. Extraocular movements are normal. Visual acuity is 20 over 30, which is stable for him. The remainder of his neurological exam is unremarkable. Lab studies show an erythrocyte sedimentation rate of 124, which is high. Treatment should be instituted immediately to prevent. To prevent what? Well, this is again uh, temporal arteritis. Because of the inflammation in that artery, it can cause uh, narrowing and occlusion of the lumen. 
and that can lead to ischemia. Now eventually uh, the arteritis can affect branches of the ophthalmic artery which are nearby and when that happens you can get ischemia of the optic nerve and ischemia of the optic nerve can lead to progressive vision loss. So the answer to this question, which uh, wasn't able to fit in the answer choices, but the answer to this question was uh, progressive vision loss, which is right here.